the introvert circus today we're going to be making paw print okay so to get started i changed into clothes i don't mind getting paint on because that's going to happen i grabbed a paper plate just using this non-toxic crayola washable finger paint and i'm going to just pull out the orange it's the only one i need got the orange paint I'll bring it down so you can see it better all right, so we're going to put these back. We don't need those right now. And I'm just gonna pour a little bit of the orange paint onto the paper plate so that whoop, we can use it to do some paw painting. I think I need a little tiny bit more than that. Okay. And then I'm going to grab some paper towels and we're going to head outside. This is obviously a fairly messy craft or a craft that has the potential to be quite messy. So I definitely recommend doing it outside. I love using uh, Sirius's raised bed for this, but all you're doing is you are just putting your dog's paw in the paint and then stamping it onto the paper. This is an activity that is best if your dog is really comfortable having their feet handled. If your dog is not super familiar with this, definitely you want to increase your rate of reinforcement and be reinforcing your dog with treats and lots of praise just for you touching their feet, putting their foot in the paint, touching their pa their paw to the paper, etc. Um, Sirius is very experienced at this. We do a lot of paw art, so she is does get treats in the process, but she is not at all concerned uh, by what we are doing here. I did a bunch of different paw prints. I had not used this particular paint um before or maybe never but definitely not in a while and so i was experimenting with how much i needed to have on her feet and how much could then um continue to stamp and what worked best when her she had too much paint on her feet i didn't think the paw prints turned out super clear giving her some treats so i just did a bunch i brought a bunch of paper with me and i kind of just stamped all of them with her paw print and i figured once it dried i would decide which i liked best for our pumpkin patch uh, so definitely recommend having extra paint, extra paper at the ready um, so that you can get a bunch of different prints so that when you are putting it together, you can decide which ones you like best. But here we go. Here are some of the pumpkins and how they turned out. I'm showing you guys there and then just doing another few so that we have lots of good options to pick from. Okay, we're back. So the pumpkin paw prints have dried. I did a whole bunch of them as you probably saw in the previous clip. I've picked out the ones that I think turned out the best, so I will use these for other craft projects as well. But I really like these and I really like these. I think this trio is the one I'm going to use for today's project. Though. You can use anything you want. You can use more paint. I'm going to use some markers just because it's easier and then I don't have to deal with things drying again, but you can use whatever supplies you want. So I'm going to start by adding little pumpkin stems to the top. This is not the best green. Okay, that's kind of nice. Okay, just going to add in little pumpkin stems. You can make them different shapes if you want. I'm going to add some curly cues off that one. So then we have our little stems. I'm going to hold this screen aside because I might also use this for, well, like I said, do now. adding a little bit of grass to decorate around the pumpkins. And I just let these dry overnight. I should have said that um, it was easier. It probably didn't really take that long, but it was easy just to let it sit out overnight. So then I'm going to take a black pen and I'm going to draw in little jack-o'-lantern faces right on top and you can obviously do these however you would like I'm just gonna do a pretty simple little face right onto the paw print and you can adjust where you put your jack-o'-lantern faces obviously to make sure that you leave as much paw print available as you would like. You can like make these puppy faces if you want to, that could be really cute. Um, but I wanted to just go kind of a little traditional jack-o'-lantern face for mine. So 
I'm gonna color these in. I'm just kind of a sleepy pumpkin. We'll do a that sort of a pumpkin face, and then maybe mm, we'll do another triangle eyes. And there's no wrong way to do this. You just want to make sure that's not even that you uh, let your paint dry first before you start to decorate it. Just color that in, and we have some pretty cute little pumpkins. I'm gonna go in. I think one more time with my green. Just add. A little bit more grass. So, so cute. I really love how these turn out. You can frame them, you can put them on the fridge, you can turn them into cards, um, and they are really, really fun. Don't forget to date them. I'm going to put serious. 2022. So that you can save it as your dog's Halloween if you art. today's video. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. We're going to be doing fun content all Vlogtober and look forward to seeing you in another video really, really soon. In the meantime, don't forget to have fun with your dogs and let me know if you're going to be doing any paw print jack-o'-lantern art this year. Bye-bye!